Hello everyone. So welcome to this uh, environmental studies, and we are in module number two. And the module number two, the name of the module is advances in energy systems. And in my previous video of module two, so I have covered what is all about uh, renewable energy and then non-renewable energy, which is nothing but conventional, non-conventional. And in that, so I have explained about uh, solar energy, that is flat plate collector, and then solar pond. So in this video, I'm going to cover this wind turbine and hydro power plant. Okay, so let us move on to the slide. So this is wind turbine. So when you look at this wind turbine, so first and foremost, before entering into this concept, I would like to explain so what is all about this wind turbine, how that wind is generated. Again, for this wind, the generation of wind, so the main reason for the this particular wind generation is sun from the sun's radiation so uh, radiation comes and falls on the earth's surface first and then from the earth's surface that uh, that is re reflected back and then the wind which is uh, closer to the surface level of uh, earth will be heated up so what happens when that lower level that wind which is heated up slowly the density comes down so whenever this molecules when it is heated up density comes down so it becomes lighter dense air, air or wind. So when it is lighter in weight, slowly what happens, this tries to move up and a heavier dense wind try to come down. So there will be a circulation. Even you can see ventilators in our uh, houses. So ventilators are kept on top because all that smoke or lighter particles will move, try to move up. The same way here, the wind, so lighter particles, molecules will try to go up and high, heavy dense particles, molecules will come down. So there will be a circulation. So this circulation uh, is nothing but the cycle is nothing but wind. So this is how the wind formation takes place. And with the help of this wind formation or uh, the frequency of wind, so we are trying to get the energy from the wind uh, energy. So what we are going to do in this, we are going to construct a tower. So there is a tower and then on top of it, so generators are placed and uh, that is connected to blades or rotors. So it can be two blade rotor or it can be three blade rotors. Okay. So on top of the tower, so what are the different components that we can see is low speed shaft. First, there will be a shaft. The first one we will get, uh, we will see that low speed shaft and second one is gearbox. And then third one is high speed shaft and the next one is generator okay the entire thing is called as a nacelle so in this inside the the cut portion if you see that so these are the things that we come across the low speed shaft gearbox generator so all these things will be there so where what happens that is placed where the wind intensity is more when wind intensity is more it will the wind will come and hit turbine blades and then uh, this blades or rotor will rotate this turbine will rotate so what happens when it rotates the shaft is connected to this turbine blade so the shaft also will rotate so when shaft rates that a uh, gearbox will be there that will be used for changing the gear speeds that gearbox will be used so this entire shaft is connected to generator electric generator so in this electric generator so there will be a magnetic material you know how that electricity is produced from the electrical generator okay uh, electrical students will understand even better so there will be a magnet and then uh, coils are, are uh, wound around around the generator uh, what you call magnetic material and when it rotates what happens uh, magnetic flux is produced it cuts the magnetic flux and then emf is induced that emf electromotive force that EMF is nothing but electricity. That produced electricity is taken from uh, through the some other channel and that electricity will be used for some other purpose. So this is how this uh, energy is uh, generated, that electric energy is generated with the help of this flowing wind. Okay, so this is the working principle. And next you can see we can, what are the advantages, the disadvantages you can see or how it will where and all this can be tower can be installed all those things you can check so where in wind intensity is more there you can con construct this tower and uh, this is seasonal and it will not be available all the time so whenever this wind intensity is more there where that time particular time we can produce this uh, electricity 
and the construction cost is more and advantage is uh, once it is constructed and uh, there is no skilled operators required so we can continuously produce the electricity so these are the advent some of the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, wind turbine so explanation is given over there so we can go through this next coming to this hydro power plant okay so what is this hydro hydro means water with the help of this water we get the energy out of it so that is nothing but a hydro power plant so this is the layout of hydroelectric power plant so for this we have to construct a dam and then there is a reservoir from the reservoir water is collected water is stored in the reservoir so what are the components are there available in this that is first one is a dam and there is a penstock that is a channel and there is a gate and there is a surge tank then inlet valve and there is a turbine and then there is electric generator and then there is a transformer and there is a power station and the remaining thing the draft tube is there and there is a tail race so these are the components that you come across in this hydro power plant so first and foremost the when the dam is constructed uh, from uh, through rain water so water is collected in the reservoir from there water starts flowing when you open up the valve so water starts flowing through penstock there is a gate gate valve so when you open up and uh, fix the pressure so with the same pressure reading so water starts flowing through surge tank and then there is a tank surge tank where water will be collected over there again through penstock water flows there is a inlet gate valve for Uh, before the turbine so when you open up the water starts flowing to the turbine so there will be turbine inside the turbine this is a mechanical component so there will be a rotor and the number of blades will be there and that is connected to a shaft shaft is nothing but a rotating element the water comes and hits the turbine blades what happens the entire turbine will rotate when turbine rotates or turbine since it is connected to shaft shaft also will be rotated and this particular shaft is connected to electrical generator so there will be product production of electricity so as i have told you the the previous uh, uh, thing that wind turbine the same way so electricity is generated that uh, generated electricity is uh, with the help of this uh, transmission lines it will go to the transformer and then it will go to the power house and the remaining water from the turbine will be uh, there will be a draft tube through the draft tube water will be collected and will come back to the tail race so this is the working principle of hydro power plant or hydraulic turbines right so this is how the i mean electricity is generated with the help of hydro power plant and uh, this is the explanation of uh, this hydro power plant coming to this nuclear power so in this nuclear power we can see one is nuclear fission and nuclear fusion okay so this nuclear you might have uh, studied this in the in the earlier stage like uh, nuclear fission fission in the sense uh, once uh, the nucleus atoms come and uh, collide with each other and they split into small small particles they divide so that is nothing but when they divide when the bombardment takes place when they split so so many particles will be uh, split and then they emits radiation so that is nothing but a nuclear fission so there is a light particles the light energy and uh, radiation will come out so that is nothing but nuclear fission so the most common nuclear fuels are uh, uranium 235 okay not all nuclear fuels are used in fission chain reactions so next one is a nuclear fusion this is a combination of atoms when it uh, combine with each other then they produce uh, radiation or sun i mean light so that is nothing but a fusion this nuclear fusion is a combination combining of two nuclei with low masses to form one nucleus of larger mass so nuclear fusion reactions are also called thermonuclear reactions for example i'll take the sun's radiation so hydrogen helium atoms come together and join combine to each with each other and then they produce uh, light energy that is called uh, sun's uh, sunlight uh, radiation okay so that is example for nuclear fusion and the uranium atoms after colliding with each other and split into small small atoms and neutrons and then it emits radiation so that is nothing but nuclear uh, fission and next one is uh, bio fuels so 
bio uh, biological material derived from living or recently living organisms or plants derived materials so bio uh, biofuels are like uh, you know solid or liquid or gaseous energy so converted into and biomass is a uh, biological organic matter so the biofuels uh, are taken from so it is nuclear uh, uh, what you call so natural gas not nuclear is a natural gas so it be it, it is uh, not, it is taken from the fossil fuels or it is taken from the uh, what you call energy which is available under the ocean so so much amount of uh, uh, living organisms are placed under the ocean and from there they take out the energy from there the living organisms so the so all these things it is in the solid state or liquid state and gaseous state so that is nothing but biomass so these are the some of the nuclear energies that i have covered uh, renewable non renewable and uh, some of the examples that we have seen okay so in the next video so we'll cover some other topics of this uh, advanced uh, advanced in the energy uh, advanced uh, advances of uh, energy system okay thank you very much